All right, hey guys, <clears throat> let's have a look at mold, which is often a very confusing subject, uh, but it really doesn't have to be, it can be very intuitive, very simple. So let's go through it. So let's consider that you want to do a chemical reaction, for example. You want to make some hydrochloric acid, right? Now you want to do it without having anything left over. You might want to bake a cake with eggs and flour, but you don't want any extra flour because that becoming gross and messy. So how do we make sure that this happens? Well, <clears throat> you know that reactions on the fundamental level are with atoms bump into other atoms, right? Atoms kind of kiss other atoms and make this, this new thing. So we would have to have equal equal numbers of H of H and CO atoms. Now, how could we ensure this? Well, one way is that we could count them, right? We could count them. Count them out. There are two problems with counting them out though. One of them, so the first problem is that there are way too many for you to count. For example, just in one teaspoon, in just one gram of um, hydrogen, there are a hundred billion trillion um, atoms, right? That is a lot. So if you imagine um, <clears throat> the amount of money that, that you might have compared to the amount of money that Elon Musk has, right? That's about a trillion time difference almost. <clears throat> and then then imagine that Elon Musk now has one dollar relative to Elon Musk's Elon Musk, who has a trillion times more than him. It's an insane amount of money. So there's there's too many, right? There's too many. Um, and it'll take you the rest of your <laughs> billions of lifetimes to, to count out. It takes too long. There's another problem, and it's more sad. Um, they're too small to count, right? Atoms are too small to count individually, one by one. No way that you can actually count them out. So another way to do it is you could <coughs> weigh it. Just like how, you know, when you go to the store, often you don't buy grapes one by one, you buy them by the kilogram, because it's just, there's, just too, there's too many to count. Like you don't buy flour by the grain, you buy flour by the kilogram. So, I want to have a guess now. Will I have any leftover if I have one gram of hydrogen and one gram of chlorine? Have a guess. The answer is no. I will have leftover. Sorry, yes, I will have leftover. So, um, <clears throat> one gram of each produces leftover. And you're like, why? What? Why? To be honest, let's, let's pretend that you're making some noodle soup, right? So make no noodle soup, you need noodles. Noodles. And you might decide that you want to have some, um, you know, a bit of garnish. <clears throat> so you might want to have maybe either, you know, one spring onion leaf or like one garlic or one whatever you want to garnish your um, food with right like like one spring onion leaf right and that gives you one bowl of noodle soup right with one little um spring onion or you, you might have one cake with a cherry on top right so in this case <clears throat> let's say that you know, obviously we need this in a one-to-one -one ratio. For one pack of noodles, I want to have one leaf to go on top. So would I? So would it be a good idea to have one kilogram of noodles to one kilogram of these of these leaves to put on top? No. You'd run out of the noodles way before you ran out. Of, I mean, you're only putting one on top of each. Or if you imagine it's like, you know, um, cakes and cherries, you only need one cherry on top of each cake. Um, you'd run out of these guys way sooner. 
And, the, and so you can intuitively reason this, and then you're like, oh, well, Bob is stupid, right? <laughs> um, each one of these noodle packs weighs much more than each of these leaves, right? Each noodle pack might, might be 500 grams. One of these things might be two grams, right? So as in the, the mass of each unit is heavier, is different. The same problem applies with hydrogen and chlorine. They don't weigh the same, <clears throat> as you probably already know. Hydrogen weighs one atomic mass units. Chlorine weighs 35 atomic mass units. So you can see that chlorine weighs 35 times more than hydrogen. And so that's the problem, right? Instead of a one gram to one gram ratio, you'd actually need a you'd actually probably need, need you know, 35 grams, right? You need 35 times more chlorine. Okay. Okay. So the main th point of this was um, introducing you to the idea that <clears throat> different atoms weigh different amounts of things. Now, we're going to quickly divert from that in a sec. And I want to ask you a question and come back to this. So, how many... Protons. Sorry, how many <coughs> hydrogens are there in one gram of hydrogen? How many? How many hydrogen atoms? So how many atoms are there in one gram of hydrogen? The answer is six point oh two times ten to the twenty three. You're like, where did you get that number from, right? <laughs> Um, this is just something that you that that um you'll know later. So you know how did they get this number? How did scientists possibly get this number? Well, <clears throat> I like to imagine that you know one they just said, "Hey, you count." So the one guy just stood there, and be like, "Okay, fine, that's one, two. It's like he he got like one gram of oh, hydrogen. He was like one, two, three, a thousand, a million, a trillion." 6.02 times 10 to the power of 3 atoms of hydrogen. So he was seeing that counting for a while. Um, if you're interested, I'll be making a second video after this that goes into a bit more depth of how they actually found this number. Yeah, they just like, yeah, yeah. It took, took forever. But basically, they got this, this number. <clears throat> but this number is very interesting. Because if you have a look at the atomic mass of hydrogen, hydrogen is 1 AMU. And it seems, and, and now we have one gram of it, it seems that if you have 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, if you have 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 of hydrogen, you can transform it into one gram. This is a pretty interesting number then. It's a pretty magic number. It's converting between AMU, which is something that's very small. We can't really hold, you know, this is like one atom, right? I can't hold one atom. I can certainly hold one gram. So it's, it's converting between one AMU <clears throat> into one gram. Okay. So, you know, I might just come back to that chlorine. What I might do is I might multiply both sides by 35. It's like a ratio, right? So then I'll, I'd have 35 AMU, which is the atomic mass of chlorine. And what it's saying to me is that if I have, again, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 chlorine atoms, I'll have 35 grams, right? You know, since since, since, since 1 AMU, if you have 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 of 1 AMU weighs 1 gram, it makes sense if I have 35 AMU, I'll have 35 grams. So this is a pretty interesting number. 6.02 is a pretty cool number. 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 allows us to transform AMUs, which are super small and hard to handle, into grams, which are very useful because we can macroscopically manipulate it. I can have 35 grams in my spoon. I can't have 35 AMU. That'd be it's an incredibly small like literally one atom heavy it's so crazy so 
this is a pretty neat number. And if it doesn't really make sense to you, consider this as an, an, an analogy. If you have one gram of something, right, you, you have like a one gram ball. <coughs> if you have a special, you know, I, ha I can have another special number, I can have 1,000. This special number converts my one gram into one kilogram. So 1,000 is therefore the special number that transforms grams into kilograms. Okay, so um, this number, we're actually going to give it a name, right? We're going to give it a name. This is called Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. <coughs> or also shown as NA for short. Um, it's also called also called the mole. This is the mysterious mole. Ta -da! <laughs> right. But what I really want you to get is that the mole is just a number of things. It's just a number of things. It doesn't actually have to be related to chemistry. So, for example, one dozen is equal to 12 things, right? <clears throat> and one mole is simply equal to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 things. Pretty neat, huh? So, for, so you, know, you could have <clears throat> a mole of spiders, a mole of donuts. A mole of donuts, by the way, would take up the entire world, actually. <laughs> You could have a mole of eggs. You could even have a mole of dollars. You'd be very rich. <laughs> You'd be about like a trillion times a trillionaire. So yeah, very, very rich. But yeah, it's just a number of things. But anyway, let's go on to some examples and derive some equations. So the first question I have for you is, how many atoms, sorry, how many, sorry, how many moles are there in 16.03 grams of sulfur? So I'd like you to actually pause the video and have a go now. <clears throat> so so I, you've, you've, I hope that you've had a go, um, looked at your periodic table. So you can see that on the periodic table it says that sulfur has an atomic mass of 32.06 AMU. Using the same logic as before, if I had 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, I'd have 32.06 grams of sulfur. Okay, okay, cool, cool. We're actually gonna introduce some, some more terms now. I'm actually going to call 32.06, I'm going to call this the molar mass. So this number here can also be called the molar mass. Why is it called the molar mass? Because 30, the molar mass is simply the amount, is simply the, the uh, mass per mole. So mass, or, or mass for one mole. So you can see that one mole, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms, one mole takes 32.06 grams. So the molar mass is 32.06 grams per mole. If you had two, you'd have 64.06, oh, oh, 32.12 grams. 64.012, sorry. So anyway, that's besides the point. How many moles do I have here? Okay, well, I can see that one mole one mole is equal to 32.06 grams. If you just have a look at these numbers, it seems like this is about half of this. So I don't have one full mole. What I could do is I could do 16.03 divided by 32.06 grams, and this is gonna be our grams per mole. And so if you do this division, you get 0 0.5, but what's the unit? Well. Again, you know, you have you have 16 grams. Every mole takes 32 grams. Intuitively, you would have half a mole, right? For example, if you have 
if you have um, six eggs, right, and each dozen has 12, you'd have half a dozen. So you have half a mole here. So that was pretty intuitive, but sometimes the numbers get a little bit more yucky. So we're actually going to formalize this into an equation such that it becomes easy all the time. So you can see here that the number of moles that I have was equal to the number to the mass that I have divided by the molar mass. So therefore, I'll just rearrange it, and the number of moles I have, so that's moles, is equal to mass, mass of substance, divided by the molar mass of substance. Too easy. Let's have an, a second, so, so let's do part B of this question. How many uh, atoms of sulfur are uh, in this 16.03 gram sample? Please have a go. All right, I'll assume that you've come back and you had and you've had a good crack at it. So the number of atoms is going to be so so. I now have zero point five moles now. So I now have zero point five moles. I know that one mole is equal to six point zero two times ten to the power of twenty three, right? Atoms. So what I might do is I might just multiply both sides by zero point five, and have zero point five moles is equal to 3.01 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. You just see, this is all just very, very basic ratios, right? I multiply both sides, and have 3.01 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms, and that's the answer. That's the answer. But again, sometimes this stuff gets a little bit more annoying and complicated. So to make our lives easier, we're gonna again formulate an equation. You know, again, formulate an equation, we can see here that the number of moles is actually equal to the number of atoms you have divided by the amount of the, the number of moles you have. Uh, sorry, the the, the sorry. Label it. So the moles, atoms you have, atoms you have divided by six point zero two times ten to the power of twenty three. And let's just see this in, in action here. Where we where we have zero point one. So, if we would have used this um, here, I would have 0 0.5 is equal to number of atoms I have divided by 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. So therefore, the number of atoms I have is 0 0.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 is equal to 3.01 times 10 to the power of 23. And hopefully, again, this makes sense. You know, let's say that. Um, so what every mole can hold 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. Let's assume that you had 12.04 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms to put in. You're like, oh crap, you know, I can't fit this inside just one mole anymore. I would need two moles. Again, it's just ratios. It's not something that's you know pulled out in there. I don't want you to feel like it's not like that. It's all derived. Awesome. So that's the end of this video. That's all you need to know for HSC moles, really. Um, if you're interested, I have a second video um, after this that has more advanced. We kind of go into a bit more details and we into how stuff is derived and some more practice questions. If you're interested, see you there. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed. And um, um, please check out our website if you're interested in more of this. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.